Putin reveals Russia's army losses in war against Ukraine for the first time. Russian President Vladimir Putin gave a rare update on casualty and prisoner of war figures from Moscow's ongoing war in Ukraine, saying to international journalists that Kyiv's losses were several times that of Moscow's, but providing no evidence to support the assertion. Ria Novosti reported that the president told the heads of international news agencies at a meeting in St. Petersburg that there are 1,348 Russian soldiers and officers in captivity in Ukraine versus 6,465 Ukrainians in Russian detention. Putin also said the ratio of irretrievable losses between Russia and Ukraine was 1 to 5 in favor of Moscow. I can tell you that our losses, particularly irretrievable losses, are certainly significantly smaller than those of the opposite party, the president said. Putin's claim runs contrary to both Ukrainian and US battlefield estimates, which have reported throughout the war that Moscow has suffered significantly more casualties than Kyiv. Analysts assume that 5,000 Russians die in battle every month, and the number of wounded service members is about 15,000. Ukraine's military claims that they eliminated 515,000 Russian troops since the full-scale invasion began in February 2022. Kyiv also says it has destroyed more than 7,800 tanks, 13,400 artillery pieces, 831 air defense systems, 357 aircraft, and 326 helicopters. Ukraine's casualty data have been close to US and other Western estimates throughout the conflict. An American estimate from December put Russian killed and wounded at around 315,000, a number equal to nearly 90% of the soldiers that took part in the initial February invasion. The BBC Media Zona investigation, published in April, confirmed the deaths of at least 50,000 Russian soldiers in Ukraine using official reports, open source information, newspaper articles and social media posts. Russia, France, tensions are boiling over, two countries are on the verge of war. French President Emmanuel Macron has gone beyond merely talking about the possibility of deploying NATO troops in Ukraine, taking steps to form a coalition of military trainers who would work inside the former Soviet Republic, preparing Kiev's soldiers to fight Russian forces. We want to have a coalition for reasons of efficiency and several of our partners have already given their agreement. Macron told, we will use the coming days to finalize the largest possible coalition capable of responding to Ukraine's request. Macron didn't identify the countries, other than France, that have committed to send trainers to Ukraine. He argued that dispatching specialists to do training work inside Ukraine shouldn't provoke a Russian response. We are not at war with Russia, Macron said. We do not want an escalation, but we want to do everything in our power to help Ukraine resist. Is it an escalation if Ukraine asks us to train mobilized soldiers on its soil? That does not mean deploying people, European or Allied soldiers on the front line. French forces have already trained around 10,000 Ukrainian troops in France and other NATO countries. Russian officials have repeatedly warned that any foreign military personnel in Ukraine would be considered legitimate targets for attack, regardless of their duties and locations. The Russian Foreign Ministry said Macron's belligerent rhetoric and provocative statements had escalated the Ukraine crisis. Given Macron's previous somewhat softer approach to Russia from the build-up to and the early years of the war in Ukraine, it has been a bit of a surprise to see his vault face to now become one of the more hawkish voices in NATO, William Freer, a research fellow with the UK-based Council on Geostrategy think tank, told Newsweek. It does seem that the Kremlin has not taken this change well, he added. Reports from late May had suggested Paris could be poised to send military trainers to Ukraine, a move publicly delicate with many NATO countries eager to avoid a direct conflict with Russia in Ukraine. Kyiv's army chief, Colonel General Alexander Sirsky, signalled paperwork had been signed to allow a first wave of French military instructors to visit our training centres soon and familiarise themselves with their infrastructure and staff. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said in remarks reported by Russian state media that all instructors who train Ukrainian troops have no immunity from Russian strikes, whether they are French or not. If you send your soldiers, 
your specialists, your instructors to Ukrainian soil so that they can train Ukrainian soldiers to better target and kill the Russians, they will naturally constitute a legitimate target. Alexander Makogonov, a spokesperson for Russia's embassy in France, told French broadcaster BFM TV, these are outrageous statements that will not go unanswered. French Foreign Ministry Deputy Spokesperson Christophe Lemoyne reportedly said,